Hello, Science 10, and welcome to our video on potential energy. We're going to start by discussing uh, this form of energy that we've learned earlier on in our physics unit. We're going to start by reminding ourselves of a couple different types of potential energy. Now, elastic potential energy is something new. We didn't write this one down earlier, but we're going to write it down now. So essentially, elastic potential energy is an elastic object returning to its original shape. So if you have an elastic object that changes shape, it stores potential energy. So for example, a bungee cord. As it's sitting there, it's storing potential energy. It can be stretched and returned back to its original shape. So that is just showing us the type of en potential energy that is potentially going to happen when that bungee cord stretches and then goes back. Chemical potential energy, we've already touched on a little bit. It's stored within the bonds of molecules. We talked about how different molecules will break bonds and reform, and we learned about exothermic and endothermic. But essentially, chemical potential energy is when a reactant has greater energy than its possible products. Then that means we have it has potential energy. So for example, CH4, which is methane, will combust with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. Now, the reason why this would be called chemical potential energy is because the methane, which is the reactant, stores more energy than oxygen and carbon dioxide. So we say that methane or CH4 has potential energy. Another one we talked about earlier is nuclear potential energy. So there's lots and lots and lots of energy stored within atoms and they are released when they split apart or decay. Or decay. Something like uranium-236 is an example of an atom that is unstable and as it dis decays and splits into smaller atoms, it releases a lot of energy, okay? Um, and, so, and what we would say are several neutrons. These neutrons collide with each other and then they also split apart and it causes this chain reaction releasing lots and lots of energy. So these are just a couple types, but the one that we are going to focus on for this video is gravitational potential energy. So gravitational potential energy is talking about the gravitational field that we all have. So every object that has a mass has some sort of gravitational field and it attracts other objects towards itself. Now for us and the things here on earth, it's so weak that we don't notice it. Only objects with large, large masses have noticeable gravitational fields. So things like planets and stars. So what we can do is we can calculate our gravitational potential energy by looking at a few things. We know that gravitational energy only really happens on large masses, so we have to know the mass of an object in kilograms. We have to know a constant called the acceleration due to gravity. So I will give you this constant all the time. It'll be on your data sheet. It is 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay, so on our surface, the acceleration due to gravity remains relatively constant. So again, we will always use 9.81 meters per second squared for G in this um, equation. H stands for height, which makes sense. We've used that before. The height of an object of a surface, and this one is in meters. So this is our formula, E with a little P at the bottom. That just shows the energy potential energy is equal to mgh, so mass times gravitational acceleration times height. So our energy for potential energy is measured in joules, our mass is measured in kilograms, our acceleration due to gravity is in meters per second squared, and our height is in meters. So these are all the units you will need to look for and use and convert in order to do these types of questions. So let's start with a couple of examples. Potential energy examples such as how much potential energy does an 82.0 well, 82 kilogram man have relative to the ground if you are on top of the Empire State Building, which is 381 meters tall. So we're going to grab, we're going to calculate it, the potential energy that this man has. So we use our formula of M times G times H. Now we have M, 82 kilograms. We have G because we know the constant of 9.81 meters per second squared, and we have height, 381 meters. Now, again, we wanna make sure that all of our units are correct. Kilograms, meters, meters per second squared. Perfect, we don't have to convert anything or worry about anything, we can just use this as is. So what you end up getting is a very large number, 306,484.02 joules. Now, you guys have become excellent at scientific notation and significant digits. So you would go back to your question and notice that both of these numbers have 
three significant digits. So we need to use three significant digits. So we're going to move our decimal place in between the three and the zero right here. We're going to move it this way. We're going to use the first three digits, three, zero, six. We're going to check to see if we need to round up based on this number, and we do not. Okay, so now what we're going to do is make sure we know how many times we move the decimal place. One, two, three, four, five. And we're going to put our answer in, oops, sorry, into significant digits based off of moving the decimal place five times. So this is 3.06 times 10 to the 5 joules. All right, so again, we're just plugging the numbers into the formula M, G, and H. Let's look at this one. How much potential energy does a 2.35 gram penny have in an air, if it's in an airplane 1.2 kilometers above the ground? So let's start with our formula, E equals MGH. Like any other time, we need to think about units. We are working in grams, and I always said for mass, we should be in kilograms. So what we need to do is we need to convert our grams to kilograms. In order to do that, we just divide by 1,000. Because if we think about it, grams are smaller than kilograms. If we times it by 1,000, we're going to get a really big number, which makes no sense if grams are tinier than kilograms. So we're going to divide, which ends up giving us 0 0.00235 as our grams. Our constant is 9.81 meters per second squared. And our meters, which is in meters, uh, oh, I have kilometers here. I should have said meters, sorry, is 1.2 meters. Um, for this purpose, just ignore the kilometers and just use meters. I made a mistake. Um, this ends up being 0 0.028 joules in the end with two significant digits. So there we go. Now, had I read this question right and not done my work ahead of time, I would have converted my kilometers into meters, and I would have had 1,200 meters above ground, um, so I apologize, but that's okay. Just for now, just change your kilometers to meters just so that we can practice this question. So I have a plastic cup 1.27 meters off the ground. It has a potential energy of 0 0.0576 joules. What is its mass? So this is one of those times where we have to think about what is it asking me? It's asking me for mass. So I'm going to need to rearrange this beautiful formula. Lucky for us, everything on the side of M, G, and H are all multiplied together. So it's one easy step. All we have to do is divide by the other two leftover constants that we do not want on the one side. So we divide by G and H, get rid of them, and put them on the other side of the equation. So mass is equal to potential energy divided by gravitation, acceleration due to gravitation and height. So I'm just going to take my potential energy and I'm going to divide it by 9.81 and 1.27. I end up with 0 0.0462 kilograms. All of these have three significant digits, so my answer can stay as 0 0.00462 because I don't need to worry about the zeros in front. I can, if I want, because this number is small, I can put it in scientific notation so that we can see it a little bit better. But if you left it as 0 0.00462, I would be fine with that as well. So let's look at this one. If a man is on a diving board and has 8.37 times 10 to the 3 joules of potential energy and weighs 83.5 kilograms, how far up is the diving board? So again, we're going to use the potential energy formula. But this time we need to rearrange for height. So this time we're going to divide by mass and gravitation. So get rid of them on that side. And we end up with height is equaling to potential energy divided by mass and gravitational energy. Uh, acceleration. So I just converted my 8.37 times 10 to the 3 joules into standard notation. You don't have to. If you can put it into your calculator properly, you can leave it as is. I'm going to divide by my mass and I'm going to divide by my um, meters per second squared. In the end, I get a height of 10.2 meters. Again, everything has three significant digits, so I can leave it as is. So ladies and gentlemen, just put all these examples in. We're going to do a lot more practice rearranging and working through this formula. So if you have any questions, please let me know.